Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, whichever it is. Today, Mel, Cynthia, and I, Angela, would like to give you a brief review over the book, Three Cups of Tea, by Greg Mortensen and David Oliver Rellin. So what does three cups of tea mean? Well, a guy by the name of Haji Ali said to Greg Mortensen once, this Balti proverb, he said, the first cup of tea, you're a stranger. The second cup of tea, you're an honored guest. And the third cup of tea, your family. So I want to begin with a brief summary of the book, Three Cups of Tea. Greg Mortensen, an avid mountaineer who grew up in Africa with his missionary parents, as an adult decided to venture to climb K2, the second largest mountain in the entire world, which is in Pakistan. So on his failed attempt, he ends up in a city called Corfe, and the people of Corfe tend to him and take care of him, and he vows to go back to Corfe and build them a girls' school. So he goes back to the States and starts raising money, sends out about 580 letters, and finally meets this guy called Jean Hernet, if I'm pronouncing it right, and he meets this guy, long story short, Jean ends up giving him $12,000 because he asked him, how much does it cost to build a school, Greg? And Greg said $12,000. So Jean gives him $12,000, Greg's on his way to build the school. Later down the road, Jean actually endows him with $1 million so he can start the Central Asia Institute, where in turn, as of today, they have about 50 some schools that they've actually built in Pakistan. So the, the highlights that I'd like to point out about this book are one aspect, there was a bridge that was built. Greg went with that $12,000 to build a school, but the village didn't need a school at the time. They needed a bridge. And the highlight with that bridge is the fact that that bridge was so much more than getting from one place to another. It actually helped to build relationships with each other's family, to, to open doors to things that were never possible had the bridge not been built. Another aspect I'd like to highlight is the fact that this culture had no written language. Everything about their culture and their lifestyles was communicated verbally from generation to generation, which is pretty phenomenal. Another aspect about this book that was definitely a highlight to me was the idea of generalizing and stereotyping. And Greg really wanted people to know that not all Muslim people are the same. Uh, and this occurred during this, the book and the events in this book occurred during some of the 9-11 and uh, Greg received a lot of hate mail from the American people for working over in Pakistan and Greg wanted people to know that not all Muslims were terrorists, which was brought us to another very major aspect and highlight of the book was the advocacy for education. Uh, the whole purpose and this, this story was to, to bring education to the village and education was was the the battle the ability to go and fight against terrorism was Greg's viewpoint and that the enemy was actually arrogance and and so Greg wanted people to be educated and to be aware and knowledgeable and that in, in turn would fight terrorism itself so the question is how does a nation succeed well according to a king a Himalayan king he says that a nation succeeds, that the true measure of a nation's success is not gross national product, but gross national happiness. And, and that is the way a nation truly succeeds. So what we'd like to share in reference to this book and how the deep, ac deep cultural aspects of the book um, play for our lives and um, are represented in this book. We, the points we'd like to bring out are, my, actually I'm gonna share my personal reaction and response to the book. Uh, we wanna talk a little bit about the cross-cultural communication that occurs and how it relates to what we've learned in our class um, these last four weeks. 
we wanted to bring out some symbolism that was in the book and the symbols and what they represent. We also want to talk about learning similarities and contradictions and uh, from what we've learned in our book and things that have contradicted anything that we've learned, if there are any contradictions, as well as we want to talk about some of the cultural elements that are found within Three Cups of Tea. So to begin, let's go ahead and talk about the reaction that I had to the book. Uh, my major reaction to the book was that it was, it was actually really inspiring because Greg really pushed past uh, opposition and just really went for what he wanted to do in his heart for the people of Corfe and northern Pakistan. So that was something that was super inspiring and the obstacles he faced, he just triumphed and overcame them. Another aspect that brought out was just thankfulness. That was a huge aspect for me and the fact that we are so fortunate in America to have the capability to be educated and have free access to education and that women uh, are empowered way more so than in other countries such as Pakistan and that was really incredible to see that Greg was so passionate ab about inspiring women since culturally women are not looked on as uh, as important as men in many ways. Uh, and the Finally, the other thing was a new perspective on Muslim people. I, I personally did have some generalizations and so my response to this book was to really um, be more aware and understand that my stereotypes and generalizations many times probably are not right and that if I am educated it'll make all the difference in the world. So that was my reaction to the book and then another thing that I wanted to bring out was the cross-cultural communication and what we've learned and how that compares to, uh, to this book. As I mentioned before, because there was no written language, cross-culturally comparative to America, much of our culture is learned through reading and books and that type of thing, but everything was verbally communicated from generation to generation. And I thought that was really interesting how, how amazing and the accuracy that the cultural just continued to, to communicate through generation to generation. Another aspect for Greg was the communication. He needed an interpreter many, many of the times because of the language barrier itself. Uh, and, and, the, and I'm sure the different confusions that occurred from that fact. Another thing was nonverbal communication was so important because of the fact that he was not able to understand the language. There were a few words he picked up here and there uh, and he, he very much did grow accustomed to understanding some things that they spoke, but nonverbal communication as you can see on the slide, the pictures, facial expressions, happy, sad, scared, all these different body languages really helped Greg to be, to be able to communicate with the people of Corfe. And the final point I'd like to bring out about cross-cultural communication is respect and how important respect is within the Pakistani culture and communicating that respect by via following protocols, um, religious practices, and that type of thing, showing, that the, pe showing the people of Corfe that he was trying to honor and respect them went miles because they, they let their guards down and welcomed him in. So I'm going to go ahead and hand over to Mel, but before I do that, I just want to let you know how we're going to do this presentation. Uh, there, the, the title, Three Cups of Tea, there's a recipe called Payucha that is uh, the tea that they drink in Pakistan. So what we're going to do is share the recipe with you as we go through this presentation. So what I have here is a cup of green tea with salt. And those are the two first ingredients that are included in the tea, payucha. So I'm going to hand it over to Mel now and he's going to share with you the next few ingredients and carry on with deep cultural aspects to three cups of tea. Thank you.